Today we're going to talk about something that's really annoying that people have struggled with for quite a while and it really irritates them. So, and it, I think it's really important to understand a little bit of where this comes, comes from, and that is tinnitus. Tinnitus. Tinnitus? I don't know. Tinnitus. <laughs> and that is the ringing in your ears, which can drive someone absolutely mad. <laughs> it really can. And it's really difficult to cope with. We'll talk about some ways in which you can cope and some habits you can change uh, that will help bring it down. Um, and sometimes you can't bring it down. Sometimes it's just continuous. And so that then that's when you need to find uh, an ideologist to talk about you know ways of coping, or what's going on, what could have triggered it. So tinnitus is an internal noise in the ear. It can be high-pitched, it can be low-pitched, it can actually imitate other sounds and start repeating that sound over and over and over. Let's say a song you heard, it will repeat a piece of that song over and over, which is very maddening. Or it hears a type of bird, it will start you know, imitating uh, screeches of that bird over and over, or the bark of a dog. So it can be very annoying. <laughs> so, so let's look at this tinnitus um, and how troublesome it can be for some people. Now, when I started with tinnitus, I was like, you know, what's going on? Am I drinking too much water? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? So um, I couldn't figure out where it came from and what I was going to do about it. Uh, unbeknownst to me, I was heading straight into um, a sudden hearing loss, which that's not the point of this conversation. That's another story. Uh, but it was a signal, an initial signal. Tinnitus just, just lets you know that something is wrong with the, the cochlea, inside the cochlea, because the cochlea is that little tiny circle in your ear it's a hearing nerve, and it has hairs, you know, like, like the coral in the ocean. And it just moves sound along to get to your brain. So, you know, the whole apparatus of the ear is very, very tiny and very fragile. So I'm going to talk about tinnitus and the things that can cause it or trigger it. So you can kind of think about the habits or what kind of things you're doing. And if you're not doing any of those things, then it's time maybe to look for a ideologist to look at it further. So one of the things that can um, trigger tinnitus is medications. Uh, one of them is antibiotics. Certain antibiotics can affect your hearing, but doctors know this already. So they try to avoid all those classes of antibiotics that could um, really affect your hearing. And they use antibiotics that don't affect the ear. Um, there are classes of medications that they have to use due to your condition. And so they're going to alert you that it's going to irritate the heck out of your hearing. And you might have some tinnitus. Um, the other thing that might cause or can cause tinnitus, if you use it in, in higher amounts, is um, Aleve, uh, any of those aspirins. Uh, they, if you take too much of it because you're experiencing pain, you're experiencing something, uh, it can trigger tinnitus. Uh, Tylenol does not do this. So you might want to resort to Tylenol rather than um, Aleve and other aspirins similar to that. If, if you need to take it, then do so, but um, consult with your doctor on what you can do uh, on aspirin, uh, you know, antihistamine that won't irritate your, your ears and produce that tinnitus. So too much Aleve, you're going to get ringing in the ears. Um, and we talked about antibiotics, so there's a class of antibiotics that the doctors 
now know can cause hearing loss and tinnitus and they avoid that class. So they only give it to you unless it's absolutely necessary. So just so you know, um, if you hit your head, let's say, you know, I'm sure some of you have experienced like all of a sudden you bang your head at the bottom of a table and you hear that ringing and it doesn't last long, it just goes away. Um, and that's because the, it, it affected the cochlea. You know, the ear, again, is very tiny, very, very tiny, and any of these kind of things can impact it. So if you hit your head really bad uh, and you have a concussion, that can cause this tinnitus in your ear. And hopefully, gradually, the ear recovers and calms down and the tinnitus goes away. But if you're, you know, hitting your head was grave, it was serious, you might end up with permanent tinnitus and some hearing loss. Just depends on the concussion, just depends on how much the injury was. You might end up with um, tinnitus uh, because that rattles the, the hearing mechanism and it'll, it'll affect the cochlea and you'll end up with tinnitus. Uh, exposed to loud noise. <laughs> and this is for all the young folks who have those earbuds all the time and are listening to all these kind of music and, and doing gaming. You know, um, you gotta be careful with that. And the level of noise, I think all of them have a warning now that if you turn it up to a certain level or beyond a certain level, it could impact your, your hearing. So, and that means also it could cause tinnitus. So if you're taking off your earbuds at the end of the day and you're noticing, you know, some ringing, some distortion, um, it could be from the earbuds. People who work in factories that are very noisy, uh, that can cause tinnitus, uh, can also cause hearing loss if you don't use hearing protection. You know, those, um, uh, those big, hearing protection uh, apparatuses, you need to use those. Some people will say, oh, no, they're uncomfortable. I don't like them, blah, blah, blah. But you'll see at the airport the guys who used, you know, the hearing protection uh, apparatuses, it's because of a very good reason, because the noise that they are surrounded by all day long by airplanes and other noisy equipment could damage their ear hearing, excuse me, both ears. <laughs> so they might end up with tinnitus. But if they protect their hearing, they should be okay. But that's why this is really important. If you are surrounded by equipment or situations or, you know, work that requires high levels of noise, you know, and you start to experience tinnitus, you got to be careful and make sure that you use, um, ear protection so that your ears and the cochlea especially is protected for a long time to come. Uh, you really don't want this tinnitus. I have it. I've had it, you know, for years. And um, I'm going to talk about things that can relieve some of this tinnitus, distract you from it, maybe not fix it, but distract you. Because really when everything is quiet and you lay down to sleep, Forget it. The tinnitus takes over and it's extremely loud and it's very hard to sleep. So, so what do you do? There are some things that you can do. So here's one. You can use white noise. Um, a radio can produce white noise. Uh, and there's a couple of apps on um, YouTube that, uh, that can produce some kind of noise in the background. And that'll distract your brain, and the brain will go in that direction to listen to that uh, white noise or green noise or waves or whatever repetitive sound you would like to focus on, and that will take your attention away from the tinnitus, and then you can sleep better. Um, that is one. You gotta look at the medications you're taking. So if you're taking too much of something or a certain antibiotic, you really want to call your doctor and check in about that and just say, hey, you know, I haven't had this before, 
but I'm taking these medications or I'm taking a leave or I'm taking this or that for pain. And right now I have a lot of tinnitus. It's driving me crazy. It sounds like a barking dog all day long. And it, you know, because tinnitus really, really can get loud. It can become very uncomfortable. And you want to um, be careful with that, you know, because it can emotionally impact you and it can impact your sleep. Uh, so you really want to look into some support uh, for that. At times I've had it very loud, but right now I use cochlear implants. And so that distracts me, it brings in sound from the outside, and it distracts me from the tinnitus. Of course, when I take off my cochlear implants, <laughs> um, it gets a little bit louder, and so I try to, uh, I can't, make any external noise because I don't hear, I'm deaf. So I try to look at little stories, I make little stories in my mind, you know, to help me go to sleep. Or I don't go to sleep until, you know, I'm really tired, but for that I, I look at uh, little stories on YouTube that I can listen to initially with my implants on, and then once I'm really drowsy and ready to sleep, then I take them off and put them in my little container and, and that's the way I deal with my tinnitus. If it's really, really bad that day, um, talking will increase my tinnitus. Uh, so, you know, if I'm talking a lot or I've been in a van for a long time, you know, that can, a lot of noise around me, that can produce some, some tinnitus for me. Uh, I still have it. It's lifelong because I'm, I'm deaf. So, and a lot of deaf people have tinnitus. And it's very difficult for them. Sometimes it can get really loud and really overwhelming emotionally. Uh, so, and it can impact their mood. So it's really important to pay attention to this tinnitus. If it is affecting you in one way or the other, then you, know, you need to reach out to an audiologist or to your doctor and start working on that. Start working on medications you're taking to, uh, taking to review that. Um, you want to check with an audiologist to see if this is a precursor to possible hearing loss. You know, it just depends on, you know, your, your physical well-being and how things are going. So um, you, you want to check in with an audiologist, your doctor for medications. Um, if you've hit your head, if you have any history of a really bad impact to your head and you, you have tinnitus, you really want to check in with your doctor to to see you know how are you doing <laughs> how's your head doing and your ears might have been impacted by by that bang you know to your head so that's something you want to check in with um, and ex your exposure to noise the the earbuds people be careful um, you know don't use them long term use them short term um, you know. You, you, you really want to be careful with that. Um, so I think all earbuds now have a uh, notice or it will come up in your uh, radio or will come up in your phone that, you know, exposure to noise, blah, 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 could impact your hearing. So it, it will say this is the max, and if you go beyond, you know, you could hurt your hearing. So you want to pay attention to those notices because our hearing, the, the, the function of our hearing and the different parts of our hearing is very tiny and it's very sensitive, very, very sensitive. Again, you know, there are microscopic hairs in our cochlea that move like a, a coral in the ocean and, that, and they just help move the sound into our brain. So uh, if those are broken, if those are impacted in any way, um, that's going to impact your hearing. So you, you really want to remember that our ears are very sensitive uh, part of all of, our, of all of our functions, and we need to protect it. We only have two. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we want to be careful uh, with noises and all the rest. So if you have any stories about your tinnitus, uh, mine changes sounds <laughs> sometimes. 
It'll imitate a bird. Sometimes I'm one of those that my tinnitus will imitate something. <laughs> it's so annoying. I talk to it and say, knock it off. <laughs> so, or I get busy with something. Um, so, you know, I try to distract myself. Uh, you know, if the tinnitus is very loud, uh, I check to see what kind of medications I've been taking uh, to see if I've taken, you know, too much Aleve. Sometimes I take Aleve for um, pain. So I got to make sure that I don't take too much, um, you know, when the doctor's going to give me antibiotics. At this point, it doesn't really matter what kind of antibiotics they give me because I'm already deaf. But they will check to make sure that the antibiotic does not cause tinnitus. Uh, there is one medication that I'm on that could cause some tinnitus, could relieve me from tinnitus, but could also cause tinnitus. So we're in review of that and making sure that I'm on an amount that doesn't push me into more tinnitus. So that, that's my story. I'm sticking to it in terms of tinnitus. If you're a person who's suffering from tinnitus and it's absolutely affecting you 24 seven, please seek medical help or seek the help of an audiologist or an ENT doctor. Um, don't let them tell you that there is no cure for it. Uh, sometimes there is, sometimes people get through it. Uh, sometimes people find that they're taking a certain medication that's causing it. So once they withdraw from that medication, they go back to normal and that's good because you don't want that cochlea to get you know, impacted. Uh, and then they go back you know, to their usual self, which is great. Uh, some people, they won't ever get through their tinnitus because they had a bad accident. Their head was hit very hard and now they have you know, lifetime tinnitus. But there are some medications out there that can reduce tinnitus. There are um, things that you can do, when, especially when you're going to sleep, that you can listen to. It will distract your brain from the tinnitus, and that will relax you also, and you'll be able to sleep. Uh, always ask your doctor if you're, what kind of medications you're on or what kind of medica medications they're going to put you on and if it will cause uh, hearing loss or tinnitus. So one of the two, because... Tinnitus, a lot of times, is connected to hearing loss. So you want to, you know, make sure that this uh, tinnitus doesn't kick you in the butt, <laughs> okay? And for people who are really, really suffering, uh, please seek medical help. Uh, don't think that you know, nobody can help you. Uh, there are exercises. There are medications. There are sounds that you can listen to at night that will relax you and distract you from it. So don't think this is the end of the road. There is things that can help you. So um, this is really important to talk about it uh, with your doctor or someone else. So because the only one who hears the sound is you. So if you don't share it, if you don't say something, nobody's gonna know you have it. And, and nobody's gonna understand what you're going through. And if you're having these outbursts of anger or outbursts or, you know, not outbursts, but uh, moments of depression, moments of anxiety because of the tinnitus, um, then it's time to really uh, set yourself some goals in working on getting this tinnitus down. And you might not be able to eliminate it, but at least get it down and do some practices that will help you do that. All right, well, if you have any special stories of your own or if you want to uh, ask some questions, more questions about tinnitus, we'll be happy to take a look at them and uh, see you know, if we can find good answers for you. Uh, if you have um, you know, comments you want to make about it, awesome, uh, because this is really important because it affects us so much. Uh, so... I'm glad you came and you spent a few minutes with me. You could have been doing anything else, but you're here listening to me talk about tinnitus, which is a very difficult uh, situation to grapple with. So take care, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>